How's it going everyone? This is Medcat here and today we're going to be talking about histones and their role in chromatin. So without further ado, let's get into what chromatin actually is. Chromatin is actually just DNA. We're looking at a chromosome, of course, is the way we package that DNA. Plus histones and other associated proteins. So not just histones, but majority of what we're going to be looking at today are histones and any associated RNA that we have with that chromatin. However, for the MCAT, we can usually simplify this to just being the combination of DNA and histones together. Histones are an example of what we call a nucleoprotein, and that's going to be a protein that associates with DNA, and as our nucleo name suggests, it's going to be found in the nucleus, which of course is where our DNA is going to be found. Now I'll ask you the question, do prokaryotes have chromatin? Okay, because we've been talking about eukaryotes up to this point, but do prokaryotes actually have chromatin themselves? And the answer to that is actually no. And that's because prokaryotes are going to have a single circular chromosome. Therefore, their need to package DNA is going to be a lot different than that of a eukaryote, which is going to have long strands of DNA wrapped up in chromosomes. Okay, so for example, humans have 46 chromosomes in their body cells, each of those being very long strands of DNA. Now to move on, let's take a look at histones a little more closely. Histones are interesting because they come in various forms here. We have a H2A histone, H2B, H3, and H4 histone, and those will come together actually to make this four protein complex. We also have one more copy of a histone protein, H1, which will act as sort of a knot sealing our DNA. When we take two copies of each of these, so two copies of H2A, two of H2B, two of H3, two of H4, and form a histone octamer where we can wrap our DNA, so in blue here we'll draw the DNA, wrap our DNA around kind of like a spool of yarn here, and then we will seal off this DNA quite nicely with this little H1 protein here. And altogether, this is going to form a nucleosome. Therefore, a nucleosome is going to be our histone octamer plus H1 protein with the DNA wrapped around it nicely like this. Next, we'll take a look at two types of chromatin that we can have. So it's not just one static form of chromatin that we're going to be looking at throughout the cell cycle or inside of a cell. What we're going to be looking at actually are two different types of chromatin, one being euchromatin and then heterochromatin. Hetero, of course, meaning different. Euchromatin is going to show up light in the light microscopy. It's going to be very unwound, as I've shown, perhaps not so eloquently here. It's going to be not compact, very unwound. The advantages that of being unwound is that transcription factors and things like RNA polymerase are going to be able to get in and access that DNA and transcribe things. Therefore, it is going to be transcriptionally active. You can see there's a lot more area for different associated proteins, uh, nucleoproteins as well, to get in there and associate with that DNA. Therefore, it's going to be more abundant in the G1 or growth 1 phase S or synthesis phase and G2 or growth 2 cell cycle phases. Growth, of course, should make sense because we need to transcribe mRNA, therefore <clears throat> making later on protein when we're growing. And the synthesis phase should also make sense because we need to get all of our associated proteins with DNA replication also in to access that euchromatin for DNA replication. On the other hand, we have heterochromatin. This is going to be a little different because it's going to be dark in light microscopy. And this has a little bit to do with its density. It's going to be very round and compact here. This is how DNA in a chromosome will look in what we call a karyotype. Usually taken in white blood cells, taking a look at their nucleus, during their M phase, before they are replicating. So very heterochromatic, very wound up. Okay. They're very compact, of course, as opposed to euchromatin, which is going to be very unwound. They're also not going to be very transcriptionally active. 
And you can see why that might be, because our different associated proteins are going to have a very hard time getting to this very densely packed heterochromatin. Because if we go back up and take a look at our nucleosome, this is sort of what we're looking at with heterochromatin. We have more nucleosomes in heterochromatin, and RNA polymerase, different transcription factors, won't be able to bind that DNA when it's round up in that spool of yarn, aka our nucleosome made with a histone octamer in that H1 protein. So going back down now, we can see that it's not going to be transcriptionally active. Also, it's going to be more abundant in the M or mitotic phase of the cell cycle. And that should make sense because we need to wind up that DNA and get it ready for it to split apart into two separate cells. And that's going to be a lot more difficult when our DNA is all over the place and unwound. We might not get the proper separation of our sister chromatids in that mitotic phase with uh, euchromatin versus heterochromatin is going to be a lot simpler. It's kind of like packing up all your belongings before moving somewhere else. You wouldn't want to have them all disorganized. You'd want them to be very organized and compact, just like this. And then finally, the last thing I want to mention is a bar body, which is an inactivated X chromosome. In human females, a bar body will be the X chromosome that is inactivated due to females having two X chromosomes. And if that sounds unfamiliar to you, feel free to look that up online. It really isn't too complex. It just deals with the problem that because females have two versions of the X chromosome, in order to modulate the amount of transcriptional products and therefore a lot of the times proteins that are coming out of that X chromosome they'll deactivate one of those X chromosomes so they're not making twice as much of whatever protein they're looking at than they should be. That's it for today's MedCat video. Feel free to hit the like button, subscribe, and check out my comprehensive amino acid playlist, which can be found in the link in the description below.